Okay, YouTube, today's video is going to be about brazing copper with an oxy-acetylene torch. All right, brazing is another form of welding, but it's a, um, welding sulfur metals with a, uh, with a lower heat tolerance than steel and other metals. So we're using soft copper today. We're going to be uh, installing a new air conditioning system, actually. But for this video, we're just going to be showing a... Uh, a segment on proper welding techniques. All right, first thing first, we're going to shorten up this uh, 7 8 copper line here for the suction line so we can um, fit it in place. So we'll go ahead and take our tubing cutter and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and take our tubing cutter and we'll shorten that pipe so it'll fit down in this uh, king valve, suction line king valve. Okay, so we'll take our tubing cutter and we'll cut off about two inches of this 7 8 copper pipe so we can fit it in place. And basically, this, this is a tubing cutter I'm using. You basically just tighten the blade down and rotate it a few times until it moves easy. And then you tighten it a little more and you keep going until you've made your cut. almost ready to come on now. All right. So now we shorten our pipe where we needed that so we can fit it in place. Our next step after we've cut it is to use our deburring tool and make sure we don't have any burrs or any trash that can uh, get inside the the refrigerant cycling cause problems getting inside the compressor, little metal shapes or anything. So we'll deburr, take our deburring tool, and go around that inner lip a couple times to knock off any loose or jagged metal that may have um uh, that may have gotten inside the pipe. All right, so there we deburred it. Now the next step will be to take some sandpaper. And uh, sand this uh, tip of the pipe off so that so when we start to braze with our solder, we'll have a clean joint and we know that we'll have a sealed joint and we'll have to worry about refrigerant leaking. So we'll clean this off real good. And so. Okay, now that we've got our pipe, tip of our pipe clean, it's ready to weld. So we'll go ahead and stick it in place first. Okay, now that we've got our tubing in place, we'll go ahead and start welding. All right, now that we got our pipe fitted, we'll go ahead and start welding. Uh, we'll start our torch first. We'll open our oxygen bottle all the way. Second, we'll open our acetylene bottle only a crack, maybe a quarter of the way. All right, now. We're gonna be welding this joint with uh, stay seal, 5% silver, solder sticks. So we'll light our torch. And we'll start by uh, opening the valve to the acetylene side first, just to crack. We'll take our strike and light it. Now we'll add oxygen until we get the desired flame. All 
All right. I like my flame with about uh, maybe half an inch sticking away from my uh, tip. So we'll start. All right. So when you when you um, braise carpet tubing, first thing you want to do is, is is heat your joint up. So we'll take we'll take our torch and we'll we'll point it directly down on top of the joint and we'll go back and forth over the joint a few times just to heat heat the joint up. Once we once we got the joint to the desired uh, temperature, we'll start on uh, adding our solder. And notice uh notice I'm not uh, putting the solder stick onto the flame. I'm actually putting the flame on the pipe and I'm melting the solder onto the pipe. And then I'll let the torch move the solder wherever I need it to go. The solder moves with the heat. So we'll move it back and forth across the joint to make sure we get solder down in the joint. Okay. So we'll, so basically so basically what we do we go around and we make sure this joint is sealed. Heat that pipe up nicely. Get the salt of the melt. Like I say, once I got the pipe to the desired temperature, I then touch the pipe with the solder and the solder would just follow the heat and work its, its, work its way into the joint on its own. Basically, from one side, once I'm confident that the solder is completely in the joint, then I move on to the next pipe. You gotta make sure you get the underneath section and work that solder in the joint. Okay, now I'm pretty confident that that line is sealed. Once I'm done, we'll put a pressure test on the system and make sure, and we'll start on this other joint. So I say we'll, we'll point the tip directly down over the joint and we'll move back and forth over the joint until we get the, uh, until we get the copper at the desired temperature. Then once we reach the desired temperature, we'll add our solder. And we'll work the solder in the joint and make sure it's sealed. And we'll move on to the next joint. It's best just to take your time. I prefer to use low heat. Some techs like to use um, a higher heat rate. They like to have it, they flame a little larger than mine, but I, I, I like, I like the solder moving at a lower viscosity because it moves slower. And I found that over the years that when I weld with, with low heat, I'm more likely to have less leaks than using high heat in the solder. It's very viscous and moving very thinly. You can miss a lot like that and uh, actually end up with leaks in the system and having to weld more than once. All right, all right so I'm pretty confident that all those joints are sealed. Uh, we'll get started on the air handler and once we welded that in place, we'll pressure check the entire system. All right, thanks guys.